I'm 27 years old and I am Sandra. I am employed at a Florida software company in a creative capacity. Although it may appear that I have a simple existence, my home is actually highly disorganized. My dad's business unexpectedly went bankrupt a year ago. I was forced to return to my hometown after that to live with my parents and sister Mary. My earnings are what our family needs to survive. My mother struck up a discussion with someone one evening as we were sitting around. Tonight's dinner will be pork steaks, according to Sandra. I said, oh, and we're running out of money for groceries. With a small sigh, not even pork will do for us. Could you perhaps lend us a little more money for food? We're out of food money already, and it's not even the middle of the month, I scowled. Mary interrupted at that point, saying, Big sis, you're not giving enough money for food. It stunned me. What are you trying to say? I have already donated $10,000. That ought to be more than sufficient. Mary gave a snort. Big sis, the cost has increased. $10,000 is no longer sufficient for a household of four. I was unable to contain my annoyance. Merely $10,000? Why don't you get a job and help pay for the food yourself if you're having trouble with it? Mom rushed in and supported Mary. Finding a job is difficult. I regret Mary's situation. I was compelled to feel resentment. Mary claims to be looking for work, but in reality, all she's doing is lazing about. In addition, my mother is surreptitiously giving Mary my money as pocket money. Eventually, I said enough. Why don't we sell this property and return to Grandma's hometown if it's so difficult to manage? There might be jobs available for us, and things wouldn't be as difficult. But Mom quickly disregarded the notion. Not at all. I refuse to return to that town. We could work at my grandma's popular Italian restaurant in Miami and get free pizza and spaghetti for lunch. It would certainly make life easier, but grandma is very rigid, particularly when it comes to pizza cooking. This bothers my mom, who would much rather avoid the labor-intensive process of baking pizza. Why are we so quick to ask grandma for help when we should be supporting ourselves? is a question my dad asks me every time. That is merely being pampered. Inside, I wanted to shout. When I'm the one who pays for everything and my sister doesn't even want to work, how can they claim I'm spoiled? Mary ought to work a part-time job as well. She's 25 and a lot of individuals hunt for full-time jobs while working part-time. My mother quickly objected, saying, no, Mary helps around the house so she doesn't have time for a part-time job when I suggested doing this. How come? I couldn't make sense of that. What topic are you discussing? Mary has never cleaned the house, in my opinion. Mary does her own laundry and carries the dishes to the sink after meals. My dad interrupted. She even massages my shoulders occasionally. I could sense my anger building. My dad indicated some housework that even a small child could accomplish. In the meanwhile, I get up early every morning to prepare the family's breakfast and pack my dad's lunch. In addition, I'm in charge of handling the taxes and household finances. Still, Mary is always given preference by my parents. Since we were young, they have treated her better than I have. I get compliments on my appearance, too but Mary has always been regarded as more elegant and endearing. Our parents have always treated her especially because of this. You would assume that given the circumstances, I could just walk out, yet the scenario is difficult for me to leave. I deal with this tension on a daily basis. Time went by one day, and I was unaware that my sister had left the house. I assumed she had simply left as normal, but she wasn't there the following day or the day after that. My suspicions began to grow. I then heard my parents conversing in the living room as I was making my way to my room after getting home. I was astonished to hear what I heard. 
I am looking forward to receive the Louisiana mementos. Mary is quite fortunate to be lounging on gorgeous beaches and dining at upscale establishments at the moment, my mother remarked. I'd also like to see Louisiana. My dad said, maybe we should all go together next time. I lost the ability to remain silent. Wait, what are you discussing? Are you implying that Mary is now in Louisiana? Confused, I asked. My parents gave me a startled look. That's correct, they replied. It was unbelievable to me. However, how she has no money at all. In an effort to save money, I've even stopped going shopping or out. My mom said, oh, she won a trip in a sweepstakes. Mary has always been fortunate in situations like that. I was unaware that Mary had apparently won a vacation to Louisiana. Startled, I chose to accept their explanation for the time being. However, the following day, I received an unexpected call from a credit card company while I was at work. I was surprised to receive a call from the company informing me of excessive expenditures over the last four days, as I don't typically use credit cards that much. I couldn't recall ever making a significant buy. I asked the customer service person how much money had been spent, feeling anxious, and she informed me that $20,000 had been spent over four days. I understood immediately who was responsible. My sister Mary, having a great time in Louisiana, had to be the one. Even though she had won the plane tickets and hotel stay, she still needed money for other things like souvenirs. I called her, determined to know the truth. What is happening? Describe yourself, I said. Oh, I'm surprised you called, sis. I thought you were waiting for your souvenirs, Mary joked. Stop messing around. You've been using my credit card without asking, haven't you? She didn't even seem to care. Did you notice? It was an accident, she said casually, and my anger grew. I regretted not realizing sooner that someone had gone through my stuff. What were you thinking? Using someone's credit card without permission is a crime. It might be a problem if it was someone else's, but we're family, Sandra. You should really study up on these things, she replied. How could you spend $20,000 in just four days? That's a crazy amount of money. Well, besides the free flight and hotel, I had to pay for all the other activities, shopping and meals. I went to fancy restaurants, bought some branded stuff, and took taxes. Before I knew it, I spent over $20,000. Spending that much money is just not okay, Mary. What were you thinking? Why are you so mad? I used the card because it was going to expire soon. That's all, sis. I'll leave the bill to you. She said cheerfully, then hung up the phone. I was left speechless. The whole thing was so sudden. After that, Mary kept trying to contact me, but I ignored her. Eventually, she left a message on my voicemail, saying, Uh, I guess I really messed up this time. I'm so foolish. I couldn't help but laugh at how casual she was about it. Later that evening, when I got home, my parents rushed to greet me. Welcome back, they said. How can you act so calm? Mary's in a tough spot, my mom added. Why did you stop the card? She's in trouble. So what? She used my card without permission, so of course I stopped it, I replied. As soon as the credit card company called, and I noticed the charges I didn't recognize, I canceled the card right away. Apparently, Mary tried to use the card after it was blocked and panicked when it didn't work. She then took out her frustration on me, but since I kept ignoring her, she finally turned to our parents for help. Your sister's in trouble in another country, and you're not going to do anything. Are you still saying that just because we're family, it's okay to use someone's card to blow $20,000? I don't think you should be so heartless, my mom said. How can you be so cold? It's because of your attitude that you never get to go on trips. Mary planned to buy us souvenirs with a card, so what's the big deal? 
I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You two are unbelievable. How can you think that way? Are you sleep talking during the day? You should be thinking clearly. She's out there enjoying herself and thinking of us, and you still want me to be thoughtful. Thoughtful? Can you still say that after hearing this? I pulled out my phone and played the voicemail my sister had left me. Mary's voice came through loud and clear. Make the card usable, you miser. Our parents' cards are maxed out, and I can't use them. You're being so cheap, not even giving me pocket money for this trip. How useless can they be? After hearing Mary's angry message, my parents went silent. Their anger quickly faded, and they rushed to their room to check their credit cards. A few minutes later, I heard them screaming in panic. When I went to check on them, their faces were red with anger. I can't believe Mary used my card without asking, after everything we've done for her. My dad said furiously. She even took the bank book and our cards. I feel so betrayed. Oh, I responded coldly. Wasn't it supposed to be a kind act from Mary to buy you souvenirs? You said she was thinking of us and trying to have fun for our sake, right? Yeah, that's what we thought, but our money is still safe, right? My mom muttered, unsure. When I saw how quickly their attitudes changed, once they realized their money was still safe, I couldn't hide my disappointment. Well then, why don't you just raise the card limit and pay off the balance so she can use it again? Let the kind Mary, who is trying to buy you souvenirs, have it. That's not possible, my mom said. We don't have any savings left. What are we going to do? Mary stuck out there with no money for food or anything. After the chaos, my dad suddenly turned to me. Sandra, please. We'll start fresh. We promise to work together to support this family. Please help Mary. What are you talking about? Does that include me now? I asked sarcastically. Moved by my dad's words, my mom knelt down in front of me. I was shocked for a moment, but then I couldn't help but laugh bitterly. It's a little late for apologies now, I said, but my mom continued pleading with me earnestly. I swear I will change. I will do my best to support everyone from now on. I won't wrong you or her ever again. Despite everything, I couldn't stop laughing at the absurdity of the situation. As my parents went back to their room, I quietly took out my credit card, still unsure of what to do next. I had secretly discovered a credit card that still had a valid expiration date and hadn't been used, so I suggested. Why don't you give this card to Mary and take a family trip together? My parents were thrilled by the idea. They immediately contacted my sister, and they all began to excitedly prepare for the trip. I even booked their flights to Louisiana online while watching them with a smile. After everything was said, I made a call to a certain number. Five days later, when my parents and sister returned from Louisiana, Mary greeted me with, Big sis, thank you for letting us enjoy Louisiana. It's rare for you to come pick us up. Are you expecting souvenirs? Sorry, I didn't buy anything. It was clear they had a great time and had already forgotten to be thankful for my help. Seeing this, I knew it was time to put my plan into action. I could barely contain my excitement. Looks like you had a lot of fun. Was that the last big moment of your life? What do you mean by last? Mary asked, confused. Well, I've decided to sell the house, I said casually. I've already sent our belongings to the new place, and someone's coming to pick us up. My parents and sister were completely shocked as they noticed the for sale sign at the entrance of our home. What? What is this? Did you really sell the house? What's going on? They demanded. Facing their astonished faces, I explained further. Actually, a real estate agent I know from university was interested in this land for a while and had been asking to buy the house and land together. 
I always said no because I thought keeping the house made sense. But I recently changed my mind. I realized that selling this house and living on my own again would give me financial and mental freedom. My parents protested, you can't sell a house on your own. It's illegal. This house belongs to dad, not you. Staying calm, I replied, oh, you seem pretty upset about it. But what if I told you the house and land are actually in my name? What? They exclaimed in disbelief. Dad, do you remember when you couldn't pay the taxes and came to me for help? I agreed to pay on the condition that we change the house's ownership to my name. You signed the papers back then, remember? Dad's face fell as the memory came rushing back. Ha, huh, that's right. I continued explaining I didn't leave this house because it was already in my name. I was waiting for the right time to get you all out so I could sell it. It was tough to find an opportunity since you were always home. But when I sent you to Louisiana, I finally had my chance. With everyone out of the house, I could go ahead and sell it. Everyone was in shock. What? They gasped. As I mentioned earlier, I continued calmly. Your luggage has already been sent to the new place, so don't worry. The pickup will arrive soon. Pickup? What do you mean? My mom asked, still confused. Grandma is waiting for everyone. She's excited to see you. I said with a smile. Wait, Grandma? You mean Mom? My dad asked, his voice shaky. Yep. I talked to her, and she agreed to take everyone in. She's eager to knock some sense into you. She even told me to send her luggage. So get ready for daily pizza making and cleaning at Grandma's restaurant. My parents and Mary were stunned. We can't go to Grandma's. We don't want to. Mary cried out. Oh, I see. Well, you can do whatever you like. But without a house or jobs, how do you plan to live? And don't forget about the credit card bill. How are you going to pay it off? What are you talking about? My mom asked nervously. The card is in your name. You thought it was in my name. You should be more careful. The card is actually in someone else's name, I said. No way. My mom's face went pale as she took out the card and checked the name. Her eyes widened. Wait, this card is in Mary's name. Exactly. The credit card I gave you was one I found in Mary's room. It was the first card she got when she started working, but she quit that job soon after. It seemed she never used it. What? I spent too much. What should I do now? My mom panicked. Well, since Mary's name is on the card, she has no choice but to pay it off. And you'll all need to work hard at Grandma's to cover your stay without causing any trouble. Mary resisted until the very end, but our parents, seeing no other option, stayed silent and waited for Grandma's arrival. When she came, they all headed to her house and restaurant in Miami. Under Grandma's strict supervision, and with the help of her veteran employees, they learned to work hard, even shedding tears along the way. The $230,000 that had been charged to my card was eventually paid back to me by Mary, under Grandma's watchful eye. Although I had planned to settle everything by selling the house, Grandma managed to recover the living expenses I had previously covered and even took a portion of my parents' salaries to pay me back. Later, I moved into an apartment closer to my job and was able to live alone again. My new life was going smoothly, and I started enjoying peaceful days. One evening, as I stood on my balcony, looking down at the city as the sun set, I felt a sense of relief from the pressure I had carried for so long. There was also a small feeling of loneliness. Just then, my phone rang, and I hesitated when I saw Grandma's name on the screen. Hello, Grandma, I answered. How are you doing? she asked. Yes, I'm fine, I replied. That's good, she said. Actually, I wanted to talk about Mary and your parents. They're starting to change, especially Mary. 
she's now helping a lot with the work. Your parents are also beginning to reflect on things, Grandma continued. Sandra, I know it's been hard for you. I think I understand how you feel. Family can sometimes feel like a burden, but it's also something we should support. I hope you'll be able to forgive them someday. I listened to Grandma's words. I could hear the hesitation and worry in her voice, but there was also a strong sense of determination. There's no rush, she said gently. Take your time and think it over. When you're ready. I nodded, even though she couldn't see me. I understand, Grandma. I'll take my time and think about everything. I replied, and then I quietly hung up the phone. As I gazed out at the city, the sun dipped below the horizon, and the darkness of night slowly covered the skyline. A mix of emotions churned inside me. I still felt anger and sadness, but there was also a tiny spark of hope for the future. When I returned to my room, my eyes were drawn to an old family photo. In it, a young Mary and I smiled alongside our parents. Seeing those happy faces, I couldn't help but remember the joyful days we had shared in the past. I thought if only we could go back to those times, but reality quickly brought me back. As time passed, my life began to settle into a comfortable rhythm. At work, I was given the responsibility of leading a new project, and in my personal life, I started to feel more fulfilled. One evening, after wrapping up the day's work, my phone rang again. This time, it was an unknown number. I hesitated but decided to answer. Hello, this is Sandra. It's me, Mary, came a voice that was different from her usual confident and arrogant tone. It was softer, more unsure. Surprised, I asked, Mary, what's going on? Did something happen? I apologize for phoning without warning. Actually, she said, I would really like to meet you. Mary leaned in and said, I want to talk to you. I never thought she would have such humility and development in her voice. Why do you want to meet? Silently, I questioned and awaited her response. Mary had changed so much that even with her trembling voice, she seemed serene and sincere. Big sis, I want to sincerely apologize for my actions. I didn't think a phone call could adequately convey my feelings. I want to apologize to you in person because of this, and I genuinely hope to see you there. I could see she was sincere. I listened carefully, not wanting to interfere. We can work things out if meeting me is too difficult for you. Mary went on, I just want to respect how you feel. I finally said, all right, let's meet next Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. at the cafe near the station, after a little period of silence. Really, that brings me great joy. Mary said, thank you, big sis, with a relieved tone. I hung up the phone and inhaled deeply to collect my thoughts. Though I wasn't sure if meeting her was the proper move, I secretly hoped that it would work out. I got at the cafe earlier than expected on the day we were meant to meet. My pulse was pounding as I sat there, and I experienced a mixture of excitement and anxiety. The clock appeared to tick slowly away, but after a while the cafe door opened and Mary entered. Her clothes were plain, her makeup was off, but most importantly, there was a noticeable difference in the way her eyes looked. She approached my table gingerly and immediately started to apologize. Big sister, I really, really apologize. I noticed the shift in her at that same instant, and for a few seconds, I wasn't sure how to react. Mary, I started, but she continued to speak while choking back tears. Working at Grandma's house made me aware of how dependent I was on you. For years, I took you for granted. I now realize how difficult it has been for you to constantly prioritize us over yourself. She thought back on her previous deeds and apologized from the bottom of her heart several times, tears streaming down her face. Mary shared with me the lessons she had picked up while working at Grandma's, 
and how much she had previously relied on me. She talked candidly about how much she had changed and how she felt about our parents. I sat in silence, taking in Mary's remarks. The sadness and rage I had been holding onto for so long began to evaporate with each line. The weighty feelings inside of me started to lessen as she talked more. I'm grateful, Mary. I remarked, I've considered what you said. After that, we talked for several hours about various topics, including our lifestyles and the difficulties we were having. This candid discussion seemed like a crucial first step in mending our relationship. Right before our departure, Mary gave me an envelope brimming with appreciation. She had worked hard at Grandma's place to earn the money inside. I'll keep trying my hardest, but this is just the beginning, she remarked. It thrilled my heart to see how much she had grown as I accepted the package. A few months later, I went back to Grandma's house and saw my parents. They sincerely apologized to me this time, and I could tell they had changed, just like Mary. We hadn't had a family lunch together in a while when we all sat down that evening. It felt good to be around family once more. Although I was aware that I would never be able to fully forgive, I found hope in my family's attempts to get past their past. Grandma gave me some sage advice before I left. Sandra, you've become stronger, but even more significant than that strength is the kindness you still possess. That is the most crucial factor. I started crying when Grandma held me because I was unable to control my feelings. With my family, I sensed that this was the start of a new chapter, and my heart began to feel lighter.